Alright everyone, Jamie Starr here with the New World News Network. Um, this episode I'm going to get into the Black Lives Matter kidnapping thing. Um, I don't want to repeat things that have already been said by other people, so I want to deal with this, which was going around. And even on the first day it happened, I encountered someone online because... And, and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say this because, you know, I went to a predominantly black school, so majority of my Facebook friends are black and everything. And I really, like, at this point, I would love to spend a year in a place with, like, a homogenous culture. I don't even care. Like, Japan? Somewhere where there's not people with this never-ending conflict and this... <laughs> this witch hunt mentality. I just want to be around people that are not concerned with the pettiest of things, like skin color and stuff like that. And this, this will segue into the next video. Um, maybe I'll just do them together. I don't even know. I actually, I just got into like a two-hour dialogue online with people when I should have just been putting it into this video because now I'm like burnt out from it. But I'm so sick of it like i i just want to be somewhere else i just don't want to hear it and there were people online who were saying <clears throat> because this one white kid you know did some fucked up shit well then these kids shouldn't have any consequences and it's really this tit for tat Two wrongs make a right. We have our collectivist gangs of, of the, the black community and the white community and the what. And it's like, go fucking kill yourselves. All of you, please. Please. You'll make the world a happier place just by removing your negativity. I mean, I wish we could just take all of these Marxists and, like, Send them to an island. I, I, it makes me really understand why Australia was what it was. Because there are sometimes you just want to banish people. So anyway, you have this false equivalence being painted between these two cases. Because the outrage culture needs it. I mean, they, I mean this is why you had A&E. It came out, you know, they were going to do this KKK show. Well, it just came out that they were paying them large amounts of money bringing them props, being like, oh, you should say it like this. Make sure you say the N-word a lot. Like, they were scripting it to build this boogeyman of the clan because it's not really there. And I try to tell people this, and they just don't want to hear it. They, they want this so... They want to have someone to hate so badly... And I just don't understand why. Well, I do understand why to some extent. Because humans are very conflict-oriented. So they're going to need to constantly perpetuate conflicts for them to work on to feel as if they're accomplishing something. So, here in this first case, you had a guy who beat, raped, assaulted, and humiliated a disabled boy, including ramming a coat hanger in his rectum, then repeatedly kicking it. Not charged with a hate crime, not charged with rape, no national outrage, sentenced two years probation with no record when completed. Now, they don't get into if he messes up probation, he's getting an automatic ten years, or anything like that. And then we have over here... Tied and beat a disabled boy. Just that. Now, and this is where you can see the obvious bias. Because here they're saying, beat and assaulted, which are basically the same. Humiliating someone isn't necessarily a crime that I'm aware of. But you see how in the wording, they're trying to make it, oh, well, this is so much. And then in this, it's just, tied and beat a disabled boy. Not kidnapped and held for hours, broadcasted and humiliated online, um, scalped him, made him drink toilet water, you know, oh, that's all, we're just gonna brush all that under the rug. Oh, they just tied and beat him. Charged with a hate crime, 
will most certainly go to jail because we we're psychics. This is the this is you know, and I've realized when you had that girl from Black Lives Matter write that poem about melanin converting cosmic energy into knowledge, I realized that's where this mind reader shit comes from, the psychic ability where it's like, oh, well, we know they're not going to jail. And, you know, I was looking to see if there was ever a situation where, you know, a bunch of black kids did some fucked up shit to a white person, and I found a story of four black guys raping a girl and, like, setting her on fire, and they're thinking they're all going to get off because of double jeopardy laws, because the judge had stepped down or something. So, we don't need to, you know, again, sweep that under the rug. I'm sure the socioeconomic circumstances is what led them to rape and torch someone, but whatever. Um, national consensus. Outrage. Animals. Kill them. Time to stop relying on cops and courts. Who said any of this. And I'm sure there are people, and this is one of the other things that really bother me. And, you know, I got into this conversation with a friend of mine the other day, and I'm going to try to have him on this weekend for a full sit-down. But there is this mentality of every white person is a representative of all white people, so we can pick the lowest common denominator and then project that upon to everyone. And, I mean, it, you saw it with the Luke Cage thing, and my friend even brought this up. He said, well, there were people pro... Yeah. And later in the conversation says, we shouldn't put too much stock in what the people in the peanut galleries say, but he says, they were protesting Luke Cage because, you know, Luke Cage was, has all this black power civil rights shit infused into it. And I think the Luke Cage show is cool. I have no problem with that. But I saw all of my friends. Oh, they boycott. Oh, they hating on us. Oh, they they don't like that we feeling ourselves now. Like all this nonsense where these people are craving being hated. They want to be hated. It's the only thing that ties them together. That's then that's what I've realized. Because when I talk to these people, they'll say, "Well, go talk to your black friends. Go talk to this guy. Go talk to that guy. Go talk." And they'll tell me to start referencing my friends as if they all agree with this one person, where I can tell you they don't. But there's this idea that they're they're just all the same. I mean, and if I said this about anyone. I'd feel wildly racist. If I said all black people think the same, they all have the same opinions about everything, I'd be like, wow, that's fucking wildly racist of me to think. But these people will say it to try to defend themselves. Oh, well, just go ask this black person or that black, or ask any of them. They'll all tell you this. Like, they can say it, and it's whatever. So, the Luke Cage thing, they're all saying this, and like I said, they need it. It's the only thing that binds them together. That's what's keeping the black community together. Hatred. Hatred of whites. Um, and that's why there is no white community, because white people are not so concerned with hating people. I mean, it's like, especially not Christians. What the hell? So, they're all tweeting this shit, and I'm, I'm looking online for it. I'm, like, Googling Luke Cage boycott, Netflix boycott, wh whatever. And didn't find anything. Finally, I find this video from the blog site Bossip. And it's like, Luke Cage is, is out on Netflix, and it's pro-black, and we love it, and it's great. But they hating on it. They hating. And then it shows, like, three tweets. No one canceled their subscription. No, I mean, it was three Twitter trolls. And that was the boycott. But for some reason, that's viewed in this sort of grandiose manner where... Uh, I don't know. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this anti-white conspiracy theory nonsense. It's so silly. And I'm so silly of the Marxist shit when they're telling me, oh, well, it's power plus privilege in the institutions. And then you look and it's like, okay, but there's mad college courses that are teaching anti-white rhetoric. MTV, BuzzFeed, The Guardian celebrating declining birth rates of whites. Like, it seems like all the institutions are on some fuck white people shit. But you're telling me they're on some fuck black people shit. How, did, how does this add up? And then whenever you try to question them on it, it goes to, 
Well, here's a black and white photo. But slavery. But something not happening right now. I was even pressing someone on it today about this video. I, I, I'm just going to tie them together. Um, where I said, you know, what do you, what, what could a black person want to accomplish? And what is going to stop them? And they go, well, you know, what about when black people were trying to get on white baseball teams? I said, do you know what linear time is? I'm talking now, not then. And this is this is the problem, is it's this ever-changing of moving the goalpost or being like, or they'll want, here's the other big thing, they'll want to frame the debate where they will say, but yeah, but we're only talking about America, and we're only talking about black people and white people. We ain't going to talk about Asians, Mexicans, the world, anywhere else, anywhere in history, anywhere, nothing. We're only talking about what I'm concerned with. And the moment you do that, you're saying, well, here's the big picture, but I'm just going to look right here at this little bit and tell you that's the big problem. And it's like, well, obviously, because you're only, you're micro-focusing in on one thing. And I mean, and these same people, I mean, you guys, you guys are going to love this interview. Because the same person told me that he deals with facts and experiences, and, but, but stats don't really matter. And I tried to explain to him, but don't the experiences comprise the stats? Or aren't the stats comprised of the experiences? No, no. And then I, I like I tried talking him through this where it's like I just don't like okay I understand like maybe you want to be a, a, a therapist or a psychologist so you're concerned about what happened and how they feel about it and this individual basis thing but you're then taking each individual experience and then trying to indict everything because you're tying it all together with Marxist rhetoric. You know, so it's like, somehow, if a black guy gets pulled over, I mean, and even this was the debate I was just having with them, where I said, where they were like, but black people get pulled over more, th more than white people. I said, yeah, black people also speed more than white people. You have to look at all the other factors, and then when you've eliminated all of them, well, then you can start to ponder if it's race or not, but that's a thought crime. Like, on some real shit, sexism, racism, blah, like, these are thought crimes. This is how, this is how privileged we are in America. We don't even have real problems. We're concerned with what's going on in your head. And frankly, I don't like that. I don't appreciate people trying to tell me what I'm thinking, or how I'm thinking, or why I'm thinking. Like, you have to be some fucking egomaniacal narcissist to even be comfortable spouting this stuff. I mean, and this is why I completely understand, you know, Gavin McGinnis, when he was talking to Tommy Sotomayor, and he was saying, you know, it's not a problem of being disenfranchised. It's a problem of overinflation. I mean, and you can just see it. We all know the black people. We kings and queens. Kings and queens, gods and goddesses. You don't have white people going around calling themselves kings or queens or gods or goddesses or any of that nonsense. But there are sections of black people that do. So how do you go from wildly disenfranchised to a king or a queen? I do, like, isn't there just some... You're, you're John Smith who works at the factory down the road. You got a wife and kids and you're just busting your ass to try to provide for them. No, no, we African kings. Like, please, just stop. Pump the, pump the brakes with all of it. Like, this is why I say, I, let me spend a year in Japan and just be around the Japanese people. Or, like, some group of people where it's just that group. And it's not... Because here's the other thing these people don't seem to grasp. They do studies. The more diverse you make something, the more there will be conflict. 
That's why isolated religious communities do very well, that everyone gets along, they're all under the same rules, they all have the same morals, they're, it's like... <sighs> These people... Ugh. Alright, so, since I, since I guess I am tying this together, let's get into this nonsense. Um, so, let me see. These girls that people have for now, first off, you can tell just from looking at them that they're social justice warriors. But look at this preferencing. These biracial girls wanted to identify as white and erase their blackness, but white people rejected them, so now they want to embrace their blackness. First off, I'm pretty sure if you have some schmuck who's a middle-aged man identifying as a six-year-old girl, you can identify as whatever you want. They're saying there's 31 genders. Beyond that, if you identify as anything other than your name, go kill yourself. You're insane. And you have been propagandized and brainwashed. And, and here's the other thing. I can tell you what happened to these girls. Ready for this? This is what happened. Hi, my name is so-and-so. I, I identify as white. Yeah, um, you don't really look white. Well, I am. I identify as white. My mother is white. Or maybe your father, or you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, you, you don't really look white. You, you look mixed, right? You, you're mixed. Maybe a bit of a, a, I don't know, maybe Puerto Rican in there too? No. I If, if you don't accept my identity, then I, I'll just have... I'm black. I identify as black. Okay, well, uh, you're not white, and I don't think you're fully black, but sure? And then it turns into, we were rejected from our whiteness, and now we mu we're forced to be black because of the one-drop rule. Like, I guarantee you, it was something... Like, a person with common sense and eyes was just trying to tell them, no, you're, you're not white, you're you're mixed, or you're black, you're not white. Um, and these girls got insane about it because they're Marxists. And I try to explain this to these people, and they don't... How is it Marxism when racism started in the 1960s and Marxism was from the 1900s? And it's like, if you have to ask a question like that, you're so far behind in where I am at mentally and observing this and looking over it all, that there's no way for me to get you up to speed. And then, of course, it goes into, well, even if you're looking at it through a Marxist lens, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. There can still be racism, but you're looking at it like a fucking crazy person. Because you, you think you have to identify as one or the other instead of just being like, Hi, my name's so-and-so. I'm biracial. And everyone just go, oh, okay. I mean, instead of you trying to say something that defies what people see with their fucking eyes and just whatever. I mean, and beyond that, you know, you got Sean King, Rachel Dolzard. I mean, there was even a thing I saw on the BBC where a guy asked a person, you look white, why don't you say you're white so you can get all of this privilege? And it was someone who's made a career out of being a victim, and they were just appalled by the idea of it. So it's like... There's so much of this that is counterintuitive. And then, of course, it goes to the... And when I try to explain it, like, you are redefining words when, you're, when you turn it into this Marxist nonsense. You're redefining words. You're doing all... And I swear to God, I bring up the most solid points, and they never even get acknowledged. There's this sticking and moving and moving the goalpost and then vaguing things out to, oh, so you're saying racism doesn't even exist. I mean, here's a crazy, the other day I told someone, I said, listen, over, over the picture of the two groups, I said, listen, I know the world sucks. I assume every hour on the hour, some disabled person is getting a coat hanger kicked up their asshole. I don't need to seek out 
the the details. I don't want to be part of this outrage culture where I'm going online and fucking sticking my nose in the air and wagging my finger. America, you're so bad. You're so racist. You're so evil. White supremacist. No. Fuck out of here. I don't want any part of this. I assume the world sucks, but I don't, I'm not seeking out the details. Do you know what the response to that was? So you're saying you don't think black people should have equal rights. I don't think you should have equal rights because there's so much reading comprehension that you fucking lack that you being treated as equal to a competent person would be dangerous. But that's besides the point. So let's get into these two and, and see the, 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 you know, verbal gold they're going to spew at us. Yo. So we just wanted to address a lot of the questions that I was getting today. I look significantly whiter than you right now. <laughs> yeah, also okay, so <laughs> we've gotten millions of questions, obviously, over the past little while about us being biracial. So we just want to go into it and, like, dispel a lot of, like, notions that people have. First of all, there's no such thing as white culture. There's North American culture. There's okay. European culture. But there's no such thing as white culture. Do I need to? I mean, for, first of all, even think about what they're saying. There's North American culture. There's... I, I, how, how could you not make this statement about any group then? Like, how could you then say, oh, well, there, there's no such thing as black culture. Well, there's North American black culture. There's African black culture. There's... Here's here's the part that bothers me about all this. Who is the arbiter of these arbitrary rules? Who is deciding all of this stuff? I mean, and here's the, here's the other sad thing. You know, they'll sit here and they'll say, oh, well, we need education. We need everyone to have a college education. This is what's done this. College. College is what's destroying everyone with these social sciences that are, you know, and I tried to show my friend this video explaining cultural Marxism, and it said the, the objective of Marxism is to divide everybody into more narrowly and narrowly defined groups and to pit them all against one another. How they don't see that as being a problem, I don't know. But... That's what's going on here. Like, oh, there's no, there's no white culture. How are you defining it? Why, why wouldn't the European culture be white culture if the majority of Europeans are white? Who and and black people hear this and they just go, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had someone even right under here be like, there, yeah, there is no white culture. They stole everything. And it's like, oh, accordions and yodeling, Celtic dancing do we really want to attribute this corny ass shit to black people nah nah yo we ain't we ain't do nothing with that yodeling and accordion oh i thought so italians have no culture greek and roman philosophy like that then this is here's the other thing about all this in nazi germany there were decades of dehumanization against the Jews. While the Jews were in control of the banks and the media and the papers, and I mean, they were in the positions of power, but you had the Germans saying, oh, well, they're Jews, they just, you know, usury, they just, you know, fuck people over with money and they're holding us down and this, and they're rats and they're subhuman and they're, you know, that's what this is. This is the, oh, white devils, they're, they're a genetic defect they are you know they don't even have a culture they take everything from us like this is the rhetoric that leads to genocide and i've realized that more and more with that trump kidnapping and all of that like they don't even see these people as human it takes a lot to get someone to the point where they will inflict harm upon another human but these people have been just brainwashed with it over and over. And you can't embrace white culture because it does not exist. And
you can't embrace white culture because it does not exist. I mean, it's wrong on so many levels, I don't even know where to start. But I'll tell you what, these are exiled. These are not the people we need in America. These are, these are people who will celebrate a genocide and sympathize with it because they don't even have a culture. They just steal from everyone. They're just, they're problem. They're problematic. Like, how do you get this dumb? How do you get this ignorant? Let alone, how do you get this ignorant and think you're saying something brilliant? And all of the things that you think when you say, oh, embracing white culture, those are Eurocentric ideals of like wealth and um, superiority and Americanism and the things that. Democracy is superiority. Like, and here's the other thing I hate that they have gotten so good with this Marxist rhetoric that they can just sit and say nothing for hours. Like, white culture is wealth and superiority. And I, the, of course they'll get into it. Well, black people can't be racist because the socioeconomics of the power plus privilege. And the, it's like, what are you saying? If you have to use language that a child cannot understand, chances are... You're not talking about anything legitimate. You're talking a bunch of bullshit. And you're talking like you're in a cult. And the only other people who would understand it and go, yes, yes, are other people in the same cult as you. Usually people of color invented and that you're now like... Oh, usually people of color invented, you know, like accordions and yodeling and opera singing and classical music yeah that's all you know the stuff people of color invented taking so like oh i'm british i drink tea um well you took that from china mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's not like and also here's the other thing that that really you know bothers me about all of this is cultures merge right like you you have trading so it's not that they took drinking tea it's that the chinese had tea so they offered it to others in exchange for what the others have like it's not just this raping and pillaging everywhere all the time i mean this is how dumb these people are Oh, yeah, because the first person who did it, you know, then their race gets the collective glory for it. I mean, <sighs> this, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this, this is, uh, and I don't mean this in any sort of racial way, but the world would be a better place without all of these people. I don't think there's a way to fix them. I don't want to see them harmed, just exiled and banished sent to Australia. How can you get the, I mean, look at this girl. Yeah, they just took it. They just, they steal everything. They don't even have a culture. They just, all of it, give us, we just take it. I mean, how stupid, how fucking stupid. Like the chapels in Europe, these giant Gothic artwork and gargoyles and all that. Who was that taken from? no one like and then of course oh and then if you want to drive them wild talk about who's in the pyramids oh in the tombs yeah blonde hair blue eyes so even half the shit that they want to try to claim their whole when we was kings narrative off of is hollywood fairy tales but you know look at these two they just take everything like the they're so giddy in their dehumanizing of people like, all of the things that are white culture are actually just stolen things from people of color. So technically, there's no way we can embrace our white culture in that sense. And also... <laughs> this, shit, this shit makes me livid at this point. Like, it really does. Like, oh yeah, we can't from the white culture because it's all taken from everyone else. No, you're a moron. That's all there is to it. So there's, um, there's no way that we can embrace white culture in the sense of identifying as white as well. Like, 
Yes, I can say that I'm biracial because that's like obvious because that's obvious. Again, these are arbitrary rules of I mean, it, like I said, if you can, if you identify as anything other than your fucking name, you're you're worthless. I mean, because if you I like me, I would identify as a musician, as a cook, as an artist, as a commentator. The only time, the only way I would be like, oh, I identify as Caucasian, and everyone must recognize my identity and the struggles that are entailed with my identity. It's because you're fucking worthless. You don't have anything going for you, so you latch on to whatever is out there that gives you the most to talk about, and you just go with that. That's what's going on. This is not complicated. That's what we are. We're we are a mix of two races. Oh, oh, rocket scientist, this one. You just admit, oh, we're biracial, that's what we are. So why are you trying to identify as white? But there's no possible way for us to identify, identify as, as white. white. Yeah, because people have eyes. How about that? Because people would look at you and say, no, you're not. You might be mixed. You're probably biracial. You're not white. Because for... For example, we spent our entire lives up until very recently um, trying to identify as white, and we we verbally would Why? Why? And what is it? What is this? Oh, I identify. Like, come on. Identify as white. Mentally identify as white. Mentally and, um, identify as white. Mentally identify as a suicide victim. How about that? Tried to snuff out everything black about us as much as possible. You no, know, you should have just snuffed yourselves out period race and race irrelevant just snuff yourselves out because you're dumb you're dumb and you're focused on these arbitrary rules that you impose upon yourselves and then you want to claim everyone else and society is imposing it upon you because someone somewhere went and said what are you what do you identify as what do you, oh, I, I, I'm, I mean, if someone asked me, what do I identify as, I would just laugh at them. <laughs> I would just be like, what, what planet are you from? What do you mean? What do I identify as? And if they were like, oh, well, you know, what, what, what's your gender preference? What's your, what's your nationality? What's your this? What I would say, why does it matter? Because I'll tell you what. Any time I've ever had anyone ask that of me, it's always for them to try to use whatever I say as a point to discredit me. Like, I had this one guy on YouTube, and it's real funny, because it was on an old video. Um, Demarcus Franklin interviewed him a, a couple months ago. It was the, converse, the, the comment dialogue on a Sargon video that me and him had linked up through. Someone on there asked, well, what color are you? And I said, oh, well, you know, that's a that's a tricky question because there's rap songs where uh, I've been referred to as the realest nigga in the room. My skin color would imply otherwise, but even all growing up, I would always have black friends go to me and say, what up, nigga? And I would respond, what up, white boy? And it's our way of bonding and saying, I see you the same as I see myself. And we were both acknowledging that. No one had a problem with it, did it with plenty of friends, had other friends who did it with these people where they would turn to us, turn to the white boys, what up nigga, what up white boy. And it was a way of bonding. Gavin McGinnis talks about this, and it's true. The, the riffing with one another, the making racial jokes at one another, it is bonding. It's not people trying to tear each other down and make them feel better. Like I said, if someone's calling me a nigga and I call them white boy, that's us acknowledging we see each other as one and the same. But, you know, this, this nonsense, it, it pisses me off. And the white community not only especially because all my uh, nieces and nephews are biracial and i really hope they don't grow up to be two fucking nutcases like these two but chances are they're going to because no one is safeguarding from them and that's what's prevalent in the culture again people will say oh well there's a culture of racism against blacks where where please show me 
please. Oh, there ain't enough black actors on TV. They're underrepresented. Your population's underrepresented, and you're overrepresented in compared to your population numbers. No. Um, ostracized us for trying to be white. <sighs> They, no, they probably just thought you were fucking crazy. They told us that there's no possible way we could be white. Yeah, because, uh, have you looked in a mirror, darling? You, the white people invented the one drop rule, so, I mean... Oh, cause yeah, because, you know, linear time out the window. Yeah, we're, we're living under, you know, segregation and slavery rules still always infinitely. Like, I, I hate this. I hate this when people just talk as if the past is currently. You know, like I said, ask someone. Let me make sure this is still working. Like I said, I asked someone, what's holding back black people now? What do you want to accomplish? What's standing in your way? Well, when black people try to join in a white baseball team. What? What? That's not now. Oh, well, you know, in the boardroom. And then they should post an article where the first thing it says is, Black people are up in these boardrooms like you would not believe 50 years ago this couldn't have even been imaginable. And I'm like, are you reading the shit you're posting to me? Like, it refutes your point. Oh, well, you know, just because there's some now doesn't mean there's enough. And it's like, and I keep trying to make this point where I say to them, there's a difference. You, you, you're claiming this is the same fight for equality that has been fighting. But it's gone from equality of opportunity to equality of outcome. Now it's not that there are no blacks. Now it's not that now it's that there isn't enough. And it just never ends. And here's the other thing is it's not like they are going to they the it being proportionate to their population size doesn't phase them. And here's the other thing that was going on, and this, you can, if you guys can find this post and read my dialogue on it, you will just be blown away how people would be like, oh yeah, well, blacks are getting pulled over. And then I show a thing where I'm like, yeah, but they speed more often. Well, are you saying they have a disposition to speeding? And which, of course, I said, oh yeah, blacks are born with the original sin of a need for speed. Like, yeah, the idea that it's just born into them. No, nothing is born into anyone. You have individuals. If you speed, you might get pulled over. That's all there is to it. You're victim blaming. I, I can tell how low someone's IQ is by the choice of words they use. And that's the reality. And I even have my one friend who I disagree with even say, you know, I have to hand it to you. You can have these conversations all day long, but you never go off the rails. And I'm like, yeah, because I know what it is. It's not complicated. It's not, I mean, it's not complicated to talk about because life is is complicated and everyone wants to go to this oversimplified like i can't even tell you the amount of times when i'm conversating with these people about these issues that there is talking in absolutes and there's always accusations of oh well you're saying it never you're saying it always you're saying and here's the thing about all of this and i want to make this point loud and fucking clear when i hear my nieces and nephews arguing with their mother or my mother you know their grandmother what do i always hear well you never let me do what i want you always tell him this isn't fair this isn't fair i never get to do what i it isn't fair like these are the, the this is children this is how children talk. This is when you have not grasped the world and how reality functions, and you think that there's fairness, or you think that there's equality, or you think that, you know, it's always or never, you're always, every time, and you're saying this doesn't have, like, you are a child. You have the mind of a seven-year-old. And you're trying to have a conversation at the grown-up table, and you can't handle it. You're not up to par. A possible way. And on top of them saying, like, no, you are not white, you are not one of us, you are other, they also... Oh, I'm sure they looked at you and they said, you are other. Yeah. 
a hundred percent sure. No, you probably had some sociology teacher tell you white people are racist against what they see as others. And you probably went and said, white people see what they see, see me as an other then because I'm biracial. And they said, gold star, a hundred. And then now you're just running with it. I mean, this is what's going on. It's the education problem. And no white person looked at you and said, you are other laughed at us for wanting to be white. I'd laugh at you too. I'd laugh at you too. I'd say there's something wrong with you. You're being a little ridiculous and you should be happy being yourself. You shouldn't put too much thought into what you identify as. You should put a thought into who you are and what you're going to do with your life and your identity will be created out of your actions, not out of what checkbox you, you do on some government form. So, even if we tried, which we have, there's no possible way for us to identify as white. Third of all, we are half Finnish. I don't... half white. I'm half Finnish. My mother is Finnish. My mother's family is Finnish. We identify as part Finnish very much. We, we embrace Finnish culture as much as possible. I th wait, wait. Oh, oh, so there's Finnish culture, but there isn't white culture, even though most of the Finnish people are white for some reason. Again, who who's setting up these arbitrary rules that there's a Finnish culture, and even though all the Finnish people are white, that that is not a white culture? Who's, who's decided this? Who is this grand council? That makes these arbitrary rules for society. And again, the only reason this stands up is because we socialize all the kids at school. So they enforce these rules upon each other and they're going, like I said, they're claiming someone's oppressing them and they're oppressing themselves. By placing these arbitrary rules, I have to identify as one or the other. I can't just be myself. Just as much as we embrace our Jamaican culture um, in terms of... Um, nationality rather than race. Mm -hmm. However, because of the way um, white superiority and um, white supremacy has dictated races, um, we have to embrace our black culture and we've learned to embrace it and love it and thrive in it. Um, yeah, because there's a mob of the white supremacist police force pointing a gun to your cell, your head and saying, be a nigger. Be a nigger. Do nigger stuff. Like, uh, who? Who's doing this to you? Who's telling you this? Who? Uh, Twitter trolls? Who? I mean, you're putting out these stupid ideas, and then you're probably getting backlash, and now you're looking at the people giving you backlash as if they're some sort of authority over you. Who? So, I mean, to ask us if we pick or choose or even, like, balance it, well, there's no or such even thing. Saying, even saying you don't have to pick and choose, like, don't just identify as black, you should also identify that's, as that's black. That's impossible. You can't do that. That's because impossible. Because who? 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 I, I'm like an owl. Who? Who's making it impossible? Who? Your Marxist professors? Literally, the minute you are not white, you are other. You are other. As per who? As per a, a law that was in the past? I mean, this shit makes... This is why I said I, I want to be in a homogenous culture. I don't want to be around people like this. People, I like... And this is, you know, remember the Jesse Lee Pearson interview where he's talking to the Black Lives Matter people and he flat out told them, I'm not one of you. I'm not one of you complaining ass black people. I don't see myself as a part of you. No. Who? And here's the other thing, like I was saying. And you know, uh, I'll say this here, because I don't know if he's going to watch the video or not. But here's a really funny part. In this conversation, I he brought up, asked this, and he starts naming friends of mine, who I haven't really been in touch with. I mean, the, the reasons I don't talk to them are over music stuff and me just wanting to go a different direction in my life nothing personal with any of them i still love them all like they're family um but 
He's like, well, ask this person. Names off this person. Names off this person. And I, my first response is, I, we do not need to bring these other people in on this as if reality is decided by democracy. You don't need a mob of opinions to try to combat the facts. Because all you're looking for is more individual experiences to then try to say, oh, yeah, well, this person experienced it, so therefore what? All the stats are de debunked by one experience? Like, I don't understand the objective by doing that. Because all I'm going to say is, yeah, I know, racism happens. Individual instances of it. And they're going to say, no, but this individual instance is tied to the slavery and the supremacy. Because, you know, if a black person gets pulled over tomorrow, it has to do with slavery. Somehow. <sighs> so, but I'm trying to tell them, you keep thinking they all think like you. You keep, th I mean, these are people who I have said wildly racist things that you couldn't even imagine. Like, we were watching Planet of the Apes, and there's a part where the one signs to the other, monkey stupid, and they pause the movie and go, they're talking about niggas right there. Niggas are stupid. So, and this person is citing them as people who he thinks would have his back. And it's so, so disconnected. And again, like I said earlier, if I thought this way, I'd be like, wow, I'm a wild racist. But no, other people can think that there's this collective black experience that they're all having. And they all think the same way. And I even said, most of these people would tell you the number one thing holding them back is mindset. Is them not thinking they can do it. Which is true. You have people who have succeeded. Why is there roadblocks for everyone except the exceptions? Why does it, it's just, oh my, it makes me, it makes me want to bang my head into a wall. Because you will have people who will say the same thing, focusing on the same few little points, and you'll just say, yeah, I know, that happens, that's this. And then they will say, yeah, that happens, but the conspiracy theory of systemic white supremacy prevailing through the institutions of everywhere, influencing every bit, so that if a black man gets pulled over, it's slavery. Like, and you're just like, no, no, that's where you lose me. And they're just like, yeah, but you just failing to see it because you're privileged. And it's like, no, I'm failing to see it because you have nothing to support it. You have a bunch of individual instances that you are then trying to tie together. It's no difference than them saying, well, the only reason Trump won the election is because of Russian hacking. Because Russians put out an influence campaign. They were putting out propaganda on social media. And so then you're implying that everyone that voted for him saw a piece of Russian propaganda, and that's what ties it all together. It's these wild conspiracy. And I even said, again, a point that doesn't get acknowledged, how is it that whites claim Jews are running everything, and then blacks are claiming whites are running everything? Which is it? Why do all of these groups have different conspiracy theories about who's running everything? Maybe because none of them are. Ah. And I like there's no way that either of us or any other biracial person who has any kind of white in that can identify as white. Sure, I can say that my mother is white and it's true, but, but that does not translate to us. It just doesn't translate to us because our father's black and and so that makes us black. And your skin color is what makes you black. I, I have a friend who was mixed. He has a daughter who appears white. Does that mean she's not black? No. I have a niece. She's German, Puerto Rican, and whatever mutt my side of the family is. She doesn't look Puerto Rican. Does that mean she's not? No. There's no way for us to embrace being white because we're not white. Exactly. And if you try to embrace being white and you're not, 
not only are you going to feel so confused because you're fighting the facts, but there's nothing about the black or the. Hold on, hold. I, I want to run this back for a second. You're not white, exactly. And if you try to embrace being white, and you're not, not only are you going to feel. If you're not white and you try to embrace being white and you're not, you're going to be confused. Yeah. Yeah. Pro pro that's the most logical thing you've said all day. This is mind blowing. So why, why were you trying? Why does it matter? Why do you have so confused because you're fighting the facts? But there's nothing about the black or the white community that will ever accept that. Yeah. There's no part of whiteness. There is no white community. There is no black community. There's these arbitrary collectivist groupings that you want to be there because you're probably a communist and a Marxist. And you're probably not even smart enough to know you are one. That will accept you're identifying as white if you are not. So, yes, we identify as half Finnish and half Jamaican. I thought you identify as black. What? This is so complicated. Why? Why is this so complicated? Because that is exactly what we are, and we embrace both sides of those cultures as warmly as we possibly can. I thought you can't, because I thought the one had no culture. This is this seems like cyclical, like it's going in a circle here now. And you're you're not keeping your story straight. You can embrace it, but you can't embrace it. You can you identify as this, but you don't identify like you're you are confused and you're confusing. And I wonder who's telling you you have to do these things and be this way. Because I don't think it's society or the white community or the what whatever i guarantee you it's you and your sister and some fucking bullshit ass teachers and a bunch of twitter trolls that you give way too much credence to can but there's there's no way like and one person said oh your followers might get confused and think you are racist because you only um, identify once and for all you literally cannot be racist to white people Ra you're a Marxist and you're too dumb to know it because you are opting towards a definition of racism that is a Marxist definition that absolves you from any actions you might do and I tried to explain this where I said this is like the parent who says my kid's not bad. They're a good kid, no matter what they do. Like, my mom has this crazy idea that there's no such thing as a bad kid. There's just bad actions. So then you've now taken the good kids and made them comparable to the bad kids, and it's just the action's bad, but all kids are good. No, if you tell yourself you can't be racist, chances are you're going to be wildly racist because you think you can't be and you have no self-awareness. And again, these are Marxists. Only a Marxist would spout off this nonsense that, I mean, and I don't know where they pulled this from, this idea, oh, it's power plus privilege. That doesn't even mean anything. Privilege to do what? To go around knocking people out and have the media refer to it as a game? That sort of privilege? Privilege to kidnap and beat someone and have Don Lemon say, that's not evil, it's just bad parenting. What sort of power? Economic power? Political power? I mean, this means, this is, when someone says that, the, the fact that anyone could just go, yeah, just shows you how stupid they are. Because it's, it's words that mean nothing. It's rhetoric. It's political talk. There's nothing substantial there. And it just appeals to emotions. And people say, yeah, that feels right. That feel because I don't feel empowered. And I don't feel privileged. So, yeah, they must. For these fucking Marxists. And I mean, and I could even show it where I said, racism, definition. Notice how the other thing that comes up is sociology. Prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. So, for example, if you think you're a god or a goddess or a king or a queen, and you try to say that white people are subhuman or white devils, you're a fucking racist. Period. Period. Point blank.
power privilege nowhere to be found. Oh, the belief that all members of a race possess characteristics or abilities specific to that race, especially as so to distinguish it as inferior or superior to another race or races. Wow! So if you try to say that white people don't create anything and they take everything from all these other colored people who are oh so creative and oh so smart and oh so intellectual, but they just end up under the thumbs of those cave beasts all the time, you're probably a racist. See, and this is the whole thing. This is why they go towards that power plus privilege thing. They, they all end up in the Marxist cult. They don't realize they're in a Marxist cult because if they actually opened up a dictionary and looked at it, then they'd have to take a look in the mirror. Oh, okay. Let's try to finish this up. This is already an hour. Racism is not hurt feelings. Racism is not race hate. Racism is based on a systematic, or sorry, is based on a institutionalized system of oppression. Oh, so again, like I said, when you have uh, black politicians, Barack Obama, the institution of MTV, BuzzFeed, all the colleges, again, all pushing anti-white nonsense. All of them, all the media, you know, saying, oh, wouldn't it be great when, you know, white people are a minority and this, this and that. Like, I mean, it's literally what they're describing is not happening. It's in the, the inverse. And yet they don't see it or they refuse to see it. Or if they do see it, they just think it's great because it's in the name of equality. You know, oh, well, the institutions, you know, some of them are, are you know, like the BBC and CBC. Like they're putting out help wanted ads and saying outright whites don't apply. Um, but, you know, that's because, you know, the, the institution is ran by a white person. So they can racially discriminate against white people. But that's not discrimination because it's power plus privilege. Oh. Based on one group having the power oppressing another group. The disenfranchised group will never have the power and cannot oppress the powerful group. But notice that, too. Will never have the power. Like, oh, of course. Of course. It's physically impossible. I don't know what other words I can use, but it's like saying, like, a tiny man cannot out, like, way out height. height the tall man. It's it's impossible. I don't know, like, there's no other way for me to, and like... so there's no way if we're gonna... No, this, see, and this is the thing, is there's no... There's nothing for you to accurately compare it to because you've created this arbitrary social construct that just fuels and protects your hate and you're trying to convince yourself it's out there in the ether that this is reality and this is how you interpret all of reality identify as black how that can somehow translate to racism even if we were just say we were half jamaican and half indian okay and we embrace the black side of our culture um, we embrace the Jamaican side. It doesn't make you racist against Indians. You need some new friends, but chances are you attract morons like yourselves. It just means that you identify, like, identification and racism, they, one does not become the other. And that's the it problem. Doesn't, it doesn't follow. That's the problem with, um, the white. Oh, and here, I, here, and now I bet you they're going to talk about how they've identified a whole group, whites, and how they're probably racist towards those whites by, you know, the definition of racism. But they just prefaced it by saying they can't physically be, so I don't know what I'm about to watch. It's the black side of our culture. Um, we embrace the Jamaican side. It doesn't make you racist against Indians. It just means that you identify, like, identification and racism, they, one does not become the other. And that's the it problem. Doesn't, it doesn't follow. That's the problem with um, the white um, interpretation of racism is it, it, they, you think. Oh, the white interpretation of racism now. So now each group can define words for whatever best suits them. I think that it means race hate. I'm actually reading a book right now that I feel like everybody should read. It's called Ain't I a Woman by Bell Hooks, and it talks very clearly about um, what racism is as, as 
an institution. Yeah, exactly. As a Marxist, what, what was that? Bell hooks? Bell hooks, oh. Let's see. I, I mean, you can you can already tell she's a Marxist by the challenging capitalism and patriarchy, feminism for for everybody. Adds Marxist in two thousand. Bell hooks had succinctly. Oh yeah, of course. I'm a woman and a human. A Marxist feminist critique of. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, this is... Sargon uncovers Sarkeesian's Marxist influences. Um, mind you, I've read Little Bell Hooks. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So, yeah, you are again, like, oh, I found this woman, and the way she says it is so right, because she regurgitates this German fucking critical theory, Marxist theory, so this must be right, and all these white people that are saying something that would make me be a hateful, evil, racist person, well, that's their white interpretation of it. Like, come on. This is sociopathic at a point. That's what it really becomes. It becomes sociopathic. Exactly. So it's not, um, I don't like one race. I am prejudiced against one race. It's I not am discrimination. Yeah, I'm not discriminatory against one race. It is systematic. So, yeah, they've just basically said, the dictionary's wrong. The dictionary, that's the white people interpretation. Because it's, it's the interpretation. It's how, it's how I view it. And when I identify as a black woman, my interpretations of the world are different. Like, this is a dangerous ideologues. People who shouldn't be allowed to procreate. It is oppression. And it is all of those other things, but it is not solely those things. And what the fuck? Really, it's not these things, because, you know, black people could do those things, too. But it is these things, when done by white people. Discrimination is not racism. Prejudice is not racism. And race hate is not racism. Exactly. And what is race hate? Like, hate crime laws? I mean, I'm against them. They're thought crimes. But, but like, the moment you remove all of those things they're removing the moment you remove all of those things they're saying it's not those would be all of the actions or ways they would manifest within the institutions like this <sighs> the problem is none of these people are having their own thoughts they can't think they can't critically think in fact i'm i'm now convinced critical theory is a ploy to remove critical thinking also we don't hate the white race i'm so sick white <laughs> people want to be included in everything so badly like, that oh no everybody else is getting hated on why aren't we being hated on exactly. we're being left out we exactly. are always included i want to be included these two snide, cocky, arrogant little fucks. Look at the look at the one. They want to be hated. They no. We want the fucking hate to stop. And as you're sitting here telling yourselves, we can't. We we can't be racist. We're not the institutions. And like as if it isn't coming from all of them. I'm, I'm, I'm so livid at this rate over this stuff. And I mean, you know, my friend said, you don't go off the rails. I'm getting close. You know when you have me saying, I want out of here, I want to be in homogenous society, that I'm getting close to being off the rails. Like, and I try to explain them to this, because, you know, this one guy in the conversation was saying... Oh, well, you know, in the Virgin Islands, it's like a black utopia because all black people are in power and black this, black that, black this. So I brought up some articles of white people being discriminated against. And I said, you know, it goes on. It goes on. The roles can be reversed. It can, it can, you know, happen wherever, whatever. I don't even remember where I'm going with this at this point. Saying all that stuff, and I don't feel like scrolling through the conversation, but it is just so aggravating. Oh, so I said, he goes, 
Yeah, well, you know, they're isolated island people, and they just don't like outsiders. And I said, okay, I'm not trying to sympathize with racists here, but I'm willing to cut those people on the island that slack and say that maybe there's a reason that they don't like people other than them. But why is it that there's a problem for white people to be the same way? That they're phobic or racist or whatever? What if you just have some little hick guy who's never had a positive encounter with black people and he decides he doesn't want anything to do with them? Oh, well, that's a sickness. He's phobic. That's bad. And I said, why can't we just cut each other the same amount of slack? I don't think it's good for either of them. I think they're both closed-minded. But there's a blatant double standard. And for these two to be sitting here acting like it isn't there and to be all cocky and snide, I mean, this is like the whole, oh, oh. And it's so funny because, um, like, you're the ones that made us ostracized, and now you're upset that you're ostracized from the ostracized group? Really? Like, you separate yourself, and then you're like, why am I alone? Like, you did this. <laughs> you actually did this. And the more that you ask and be like, oh my gosh, but like, you hate me, you hate me, you hate me. It's not going to make me hate you. Exactly. I don't. Gonna, Sorry. It's not gonna happen. I know. Maybe when the day that my likes... Um, you were just saying they have no culture. You do hate them. You're too dumb and brain dead to even realize, oh, but I'm sure that's not hate because, you know, it's race hate and there is no race hate because race hate isn't racism, you know, in, in my candy land world that me and my sister, we've created. Stupid white boy thirst goes away. Maybe then I'll hate white people. But for now, I'm plagued by loving white people. I mean, not as, like, an idea, more like individuals. Oh, even her. See, and the, even her, she doesn't want a black guy. She doesn't... <sighs> these two are a piece of work. And I really wonder how, how these black girls, like Francesca Ramsey in this one, who'd spew out all this Marxist bullshit, how they find these little cuck white boys. How? I could not last five minutes in a room with a chick like this. And let me tell you another thing. Black chicks were not like this when I grew up. They were not like it at all. Now, I would tell you, I would go out to a club, and I would have one of the hottest black girls in the school grinding up on me. And there would be some black dudes getting pretty jealous because they don't like seeing white guys with their women. Some of them would respect it. They'd be like, yo, I saw you. I see you. And other ones would just hate hate it. There's some really hot white people out there. Mm -hmm. And my mama's half white. I mean, my mama's white. <laughs> I'm done with these two. I can't, I can't even, I can't take this shit anymore. It's so stupid. It, it really shows that people can be educated to, to be so disgusting and so hostile to other people and I just I, I couldn't imagine myself having these sorts of views saying these sorts of things telling people how they see things or this you know this is reality this is why this happens this is why that happens this is why I mean with me every and my friend you don't go off the rails because everything's in a state of flux it's always changing it's always you know something different numerous factors shades of gray it's all a mess all the time and I'm comfortable with the chaos I'm comfortable with the chaos it's these other people that want everything so rigid. I identify as this, and this checkbox, and this checkbox, and when I put this checkbox, someone said, you can't do that. Like, stop. Live your life. Find some happiness. Get off this fucking racial narcissism shit. That's what it is. And the other thing is, you know, Kanye West wrote a song, Black Skinhead. This is the black skinhead mentality. You have no culture. You're subhuman. You are white devils. Whatever, whatever. It's nonsense. And it needs to be stopped. Because we've, we're starting to see where it leads. And it leads to disabled people being kidnapped 
and being tortured and everything like that. And beyond that, people saying, well, they shouldn't be punished because it happened to someone else. And because two wrongs make a right, and we're in this tit-for-tat, Cold War, race war bullshit, where everything's just okay if it ever happened to someone else in the past, and now it's happening to someone else of an opposite race. This is so disgusting. These people banished. Banished off the face of the earth. <sighs> Have a good night, everyone.